Let's talk about how we might go about preparing an ether. Industrially, diethyl ether, which is shown over here, is prepared by the acid-catalyzed dehydration of ethanol. So basically, they take ethanol and they treat it with an acid catalyst. So here we have hydronium, H3O+, shown right here. Okay, and what that does is it protonates the alcohol and ethanol, converts it into an oxonium, which is a good leaving group. Then the other alcohol or another equivalent of the alcohol can come in and do an SN2 that you see here. Then we do a proton transfer in the end, and not only do we produce diethyl ether, but we would also end up producing the protonated, um, the protonated alcohol, which is also going to serve as an acid catalyst, right? So we kind of keep making the, the acid over and over, and that's the whole point of a catalyst. Anyhow, the thing is that this is a great way to make a symmetrical ether like diethyl ether, but the problem with this is that you can only make symmetrical ethers in this way. And so if we want to make an asymmetrical ether, we need to have a different strategy. And the best strategy out there to make an asymmetric ether is to use what's called the Williamson ether synthesis. The Williamson ether synthesis is a viable approach for many asymmetric asymmetrical ethers. And what you do is you take your alcohol. So in the first step, you take your alcohol. You know what an alcohol is. And you treat it with sodium hydride. And the hydride, so you should know how to draw the Lewis structure of sodium hydride. And hydride acts as a base. And the alcohol acts as an acid. And it can abstract that proton, make an alkoxide. And then you treat that with an alkyl, an alkyl halide, halide here. And it will do an SN2 reaction. And it will do a nucleophilic attack to produce your ether. And the whole mechanism is shown right here. So here's the proton transfer. So not only do you form the alkoxide that's shown right here, you also form hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas. So that will um, leave your reaction flask in the form of bubbles. And then you get your nucleophilic attack. And here they're showing it attacking a methyl halide. And you end up with a methyl ether in this case. All right. Something you probably noticed, though, is that since this is an SN2 substitution, right, this reaction right here, it's only going to work well with unhindered alkyl halides. What does that mean? That means that this step right here, the SN2, is only going to work well if we have a methyl halide, like is shown in the example here on this page, right? We have a methyl, okay, or a primary alkyl halide. It's not going to work well with secondary or tertiary because, as you remember from way back in Chapter 7 of Organic Chemistry 1 of 3101, that if you take an alkoxide and treat it with, um, uh, treat a, a secondary or tertiary um, alkyl halide with an alkoxide, you're mostly going to get an E2 reaction. So you won't get the substitution reaction. It's an important that you understand elimination and substitution. So it says here, consider these two possible routes to synthesize um, methyl terbutyl ether, which again isn't the correct name, it should be terbutyl methyl ether, um, via a Williamson ether synthesis. Look, we could start with terbutanol, shown here, we could deprotonate that and treat it with methyl iodide. That's going to work. Right? It says this route will work. Why? Because this is a methyl halide, right? That's methyl iodide. You can do an SN2 reaction with that. No problem. If you draw the intermediate, the alkoxide, I'm not going to draw the full mechanism, but if you draw the t-butoxide, what's that going to do when it sees the methyl iodide? It's just going to do a beautiful SN2 reaction on that, like this. And then we end up getting our product, our MTBE. On the other hand, if you start with methanol, deprotonate that, sure, you can make methoxide, right? You can make metho methoxide. We've used it many times in syntheses in this class, but it's not going to do an SN2 reaction, right? If I try to draw this, that's not going to happen. Cross, cross, those will not happen. You're actually going to get elimination. And in fact, instead of making MTBE, what you would do is you would end up ripping off this proton, like this, and you would do an elimination reaction. Oops. You do an elimination reaction like this, and you'd end up with this molecule, which is isobutylene. Okay? So again, this route will not work because it requires a tertiary alkyl halide. Let's look at another way you can go about preparing an ether. And before we do that, I want you to recall a reaction called oxymercuration demercuration which can be used to synthesize an alcohol from an alkene. And that's something that we learned way back in Chapter 8. So if you remember, what we do is we take an alkene. So here we have an alkene. 
and we treat it with mercuric acetate and water. And then in the second step, we treat it with sodium borohydride. Now, I never asked you to memorize this mechanism, but if you go back and you look at the mechanism, what you do in the very first step is you form a mercurinium ion with the mercuric or through the mercuric acetate. And then water comes in and acts as a nucleophile. And that's why you end up with the hydroxyl. So that's why you get water added to the alkene. And remember that occurs with Markovnikov regioselectivity. Now the reason I brought up the mechanism is because if you try this same reaction, but instead of using water as a solvent, if you use an alcohol as a solvent, we call it alkoxymercuration demercuration. And so the alcohol acts as a nucleophile on the mercurinium ion, and you end up making an ether. See, we have R, O, and then we have a carbon here. So there's our ether. And again, this also occurs with Markovnikov regioselectivity. So now we've got two good ways to make an ether, using either the Williamson ether synthesis or alkoxymercuration demercuration. Let's take a step back and look at a couple problems that involve the Williamson ether synthesis. So we're asked to show how we would prepare either of these molecules using the Williamson ether synthesis. Now when I try this first problem, I could either think about breaking um, the carbon-oxygen bond here, or I could think about breaking the carbon-oxygen bond here. The problem, if I was to start with um, breaking the bond that I have in blue there, the bond, one that I marked in blue, if I was to break that, the problem with that is that I would have to start with this is my alcohol. So I'd start with this, oops, I'd start with this as my alcohol. Okay, first I would treat it with sodium hydride. I'm not going to draw the mechanism, but you'd end up with this alkoxide. You might be thinking, okay, well, there's nothing wrong with that alkoxide. But the problem is, is that then you would have to add these three carbons. And what's the alkyl halide you would have to treat this alkoxide with? You'd have to use isopropyl iodide, okay? or 2-iodopropane, whatever you want to call it. And the problem with that is that this is a secondary alkyl halide, okay? Secondary alkyl halide. And in fact, mostly what you would get here is mostly the E2 product, right? You'd end up pulling off this proton here and you'd end up making propylene. So you'd end up with this compound mostly. You would get some SN2, but you would mostly get the E2 product. And so this would not be a reasonable way to make this molecule. Now, what if I decided to break where the red line is? Okay, what if I decided to break that bond there? Well, in that case, I'd have to start with isopropanol. Okay, now in my first step, I would treat it with sodium hydride. I'd make this molecule here. Okay, so here's my alkoxide, like that. And then the alkyl halide that I would have to treat it with would be this. So let's draw it out, and it would look just like this. Okay, now this is a primary alkyl halide, and so the SN2 is going to work really well. Okay, in fact, you're only mostly going to get SN2 product. And so this would be a reasonable way for us to make this molecule. So we would end up with our alcohol, alkyl halide having the iodide, in this case, displaced by the alkoxide, and we would end up with the desired product. Let's take a look at this ether here. We have two options. We can either break the bond right here, or we could break the bond between the oxygen and the methyl. Well, remember that an SN2 is going to work really well on a methyl halide. And so I think if we break the bond between the oxygen and the carbon of the methyl group, that would be the way to go. So the alcohol that we would start with would be this, which would be 1-methylcyclohexanol. So we'll draw that out. We would treat that with our sodium hydride. Okay, we'd end up with this alkoxide. And it's going to do an SN2 beautifully on a methyl halide. I'm going to write methyl iodide. You could write methyl bromide, methyl chloride. Both would work. Okay, let's draw our SN2 reaction like that. And that is going to give us our desired ether. So we have this, okay, and that's the desired product. I'm not going to go over it in gross detail, but again, if you were to break the bond that I have highlighted in blue, now if you were to start with methanol, okay, and treat that with sodium hydride, okay, you would end up with sodium methoxide. I'll just draw the methoxide. And then for your electrophile, you'd have to have a tertiary alkyl halide, okay?
And so again, that would end up giving you mostly the E2 product. And so this would not be a viable or a reasonable way to make the desired product. Let's try another question that involves alkoxymercuration, demercuration. It says identify the reagents that you would use to prepare each of the following ethers using that method. If we look at the first example, you can see that we're adding um, an ethoxy group to the molecule. And how are we going to add that? We're going to add that by using ethanol, right? So we're going to use, in the first step, we're going to have our mercuric acetate, our mercuric acetate, and ethanol, okay? And then in the second step, we're going to treat that with sodium borohydride. Let's take a look at the next one. We start with 1-methylcyclohexene, and we end up producing an ether right here. So what would be the alcohol we would have to treat our alkene with? Well, it's going to have this part right here. So it's going to be cyclobutanol is what we would use. And so in our first step, we would have mercuric, mercuric acetate, and we'll do the reaction in cyclobutanol, okay? And then in the second step, our demercuration involves just treatment with sodium borohydride.